Hello everybody and welcome to a review discussion on Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now specifically we're going to come at this from the angle of like what we think is improved in the remake, what we think is better in the original, and then overall is Resident Evil 4 Remake the definitive way to play Resident Evil 4. So today as usual in these discussions I'm joined by my friend David. Leon, hell, <laughs> which isn't actually in the remake. <laughs> no, how are I'm, you, Adam? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So that's David, everybody. David oh, is. Yeah. Uh, David loves Resident Evil Four. David has played Resident Evil Four a lot. He is the expert here. I've only played Resident Evil Four the original twice, and I played the remake once. So, David, how many times have you played Resident Evil Four and the remake? Oh, uh, yikes. Um, let me see. On the PS2, I played it originally. I'd say I remember getting the Chicago Typewriter, the Infinite uh, Rocket Launcher, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and I beat it on like all the difficulty levels, beat separate ways. I'd say at least five or six times the PS2. Uh, I got all the trophies. So that's two or three more playthroughs on PS4, uh, Switch, PC recently on Steam Deck and on PC. And played the Wii version. Never actually finished it, weirdly enough. It's the only one I haven't finished, which the I best should go back of the to. Game? It is. It is. I, yes. Um, if we could have the, the Wii version with the enhancements of the PC version, hmm. we would be we'd be doing well. But I've played Resident Evil 4, the original, I'd say over 15 times, maybe 20 times. It's one of those uh, comfort games that I play that I play very surgically or procedurally. Um, and the remake I've played, uh, played through once, and I'm on the way through my second playthrough trying to get the uh, armor for Ashley. So working through that at the moment. That's good. So, David, uh, we'll just start off. What, like, what, what's your sort of, you know, my give me your, your what, what you call it, your 50,000 50, feet thoughts on a Resident Evil 4 remake? It's a very strange experience because... As I said, Resident Evil 4, the original, is a game that I know so well that I have this really long heritage with and history with. So when I first heard about this remake, I was actually really against it or really worried about it, that they were going to wreck it. But obviously this was, I mean, there was Resident Evil 2 remake and such, which was nice. But then the 3 remake, which I do like, but it cut out a lot and this, that and the other. So I was a little concerned. But as time went on, I thought, you know, it is Capcom. Can they really screw it up? You know, I, I kind of starting to trust them more and more. And I have to say, I think they knocked it out of the park. It's really, it's just, as I said, it was, it was a magical experience almost, as weird as it sounds, because it's, it's like the game that you remember, but it's, everything is just slightly heightened or everything is slightly new. It's very familiar, but it's very fresh at the same time. Now, um, I don't know if I'd say, I'd have to think about how in, in the context of against the original, but in terms of a remake, I think this is a spectacular game. I would highly recommend anyone with the other Resident Evil games. I think lots of people will like them, but, you know, I have to give them the proviso of, uh, you know, oh, there's a lot of puzzles, this, that and the other. For this, I would recommend anyone to go out and buy it straight away, play it. It's that good. Yeah, I basically agree with absolutely everything you said there. And I really like that point about the differences between like the other Resident Evil games, the way like Resident Evil 7 and even 8 to an extent and then Resident Evil 2 Remake have a lot more puzzles in them. So they are uh, definitely harder recommendations to make to like everybody. But with this game, yeah, I think this is like, this is just like a peak action game, like a peak third person shooter that like just anybody can enjoy. It has absolutely everything. It's like, it has a bit of difficulty if you want it. It has... A really cool inventory system it has yes. really just amazing boss fights and then it just has an overall like very i don't know digestible tone or something that's that's a bit of a weird a weird sentence to say but it's like if resident evil 4 was a movie it would be a movie that you could just go to a cinema and just sit down eat some popcorn and watch and have some fun times and i think that kind of sums up my thoughts on resident evil 4 Remake. Exactly. Yeah, mm. that's I'd be in total agreement with that. And one thing I will say very quickly as well, in terms of plotting and all, what's really great about it is that it is self-contained to a certain extent compared to the rest of the series. So if you haven't played the other games, I would again recommend them all. But if you can only play one Resident Evil game, I would really, and you want to play a modern one, I'd really recommend that you play this game. It's really that good. Mm. Yeah. So I think the best place to start is probably just to talk about just the general like how leon controls so i'm gonna take this well i'll go first i guess so 
for anybody that doesn't know, Resident Evil 4, the original, has... We're just going to call it original and then remake, just for clarity. So Resident Evil 4, the original one, has tank control, so you can't aim and shoot at the same time. So if you have no nostalgia for it, it like tank controls are kind of hard to get into. So I think that's the biggest change going into it is that Leon just feels a lot better to control. He's just faster. He's slicker. I think the aiming is actually a lot harder, though. That's that's one thing. I think Resident Evil 4, the original one, is quite is honestly quite easy, I think, to aim. But this kind of has the more Resident Evil 2 remake-style aiming, where there's a lot more sway to your weapons, and it is a lot harder to hit. But then it kind of balances that out with just all the crazy stuff you can do. Like, the original, obviously, you know, you can suplex, you can roundhouse kick. But just, just how fun it is just to headshot a zombie, run up, roundhouse kick him, take out your knife, start slashing them, and then like one of their heads pops off, you're like, oh crap, he's going to mutate. I have to run up, stab him, stab him. And then it's just so action-packed. And because Leon's movement has just changed and is a lot more fluid, I think it just lends to the action even more. And it just makes it like just an even better action game than the original already was. So... And then the knife system is changed. In the original, the knife couldn't break. But here, the, the knife has durability, which you can repair. But it's a lot more like robust of a knife system. Like, you can you can use it in combat just a, a lot easier. You can actually just slash. You don't have to, like, take it out and stop and then slash. And then even stuff like, you know, when you have to open up a barrel or a, a wooden box or something? Yeah, you don't need context, to, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to take it out and... And then slash, you just go open, you press X and it slashes it open. So in general, Leon's movement is like out of everything in this game, I think that is the one thing that I can say is like 100% absolutely definitively better than the original. So what are your thoughts, David, on the on sort of Leon's updated movement in combat? Well, I'm coming going to come at this from two angles. So first of all, comparing it to the remakes and comparing it to the original. So first of all, with the original I don't have a problem with tank controls. I know a lot of people do, especially people who are, let's say, younger gamers or newer gamers. But uh, like, yeah, I know, I, so, mm, you know what I mean. Like, I, I yeah. know, so, and even retro game, I understand people have issues with it. I think they have a place, but I, I, I can understand why people don't like them. But I never really had an issue with them, and I think most people can accommodate for them after a while. I have played the original so many times that it's like second nature to me. So I'll never know what the experience is like for someone who's not used to it, but. It is, in, if you're comparing the original to this, Leon's movement is so much more capable. He is so much more, you can crouch, which I know sounds really dopey, but like yeah. you couldn't in the original, like it's a big deal. You can do stealth, although it's not a very well, well, not that's well, not well developed, but it's not, I don't think the focus is on stealth. It's just an extra little thing you yeah. can do um, to give you more options. It's in that sense, I think it is almost an, a complete improvement you do lose out, I think, to a certain extent on some of the horror of the original where, well, not horror, but more thrill of the original where enemies, the camera was very close up behind Leon, so you would only see enemies in your near peripheral vision, which a big part of the thrill was based off of. I, I think it's a completely um, justifiable trade-off. The enemies are a lot more aggressive now. They come at you much quicker. You can see a lot more around you, but it's a lot more thrilling. But I will say when I first played the game, and the demo in particular... I actually thought the movement kind of sucked, which is <laughs> really weird <laughs> saying that after praising it. So I just want to say, I do think the movement now after playing it for so long is really, really good on what they've done. But when I first played it, um, I played Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake quite a lot. I platinum both of them and Resident Evil 2 Remake in particular takes took me around 10 to 12 playthroughs, which sounds like a lot. But near the end, you can beat the game in like 20, 30 minutes if you know what you're doing. And, that, and the games are built for that. It's actually quite, I think the platinums are really good fun. But I got used to that movement system where Leon and Claire and Jill and such are quite light. They're quite agile. Whereas in Resident Evil 4 Remake, in the demo at least, and when I was playing the uh, the remake as it first came out, Leon felt quite sluggish and quite heavy, as if he's carrying around heavy body armor that he's carrying around a lot of stuff. Which I guess, it, which does he's make carrying sense around his gun. muscles, David. That's he that's, is, he yeah, is. That, and he's carrying it. around his trauma from Raccoon yeah. City. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
and at first I really didn't like it. I, I thought this this isn't doing it for me. Now I I was I had in in uh, in excitement for Resident Evil Four Remake. I replayed the original. I replayed two remake and three remake all on PC. I have a high refresh rate monitor, so it's 144 hertz. That's probably playing into a keyboard and mouse. But even then, on the PS, um, playing it on Steam Deck, I didn't get that same feeling that I got when I was playing the demo, that there's something just so sluggish here. And for the first few hours, I felt like that, and I didn't know what it was, even with the aiming. And as time went on, particularly as I got into the second section, I don't know, are we doing spoilers, or are we... Uh, uh, are we keep... Yeah, yeah, no. I'll, I'll, I'll keep yeah, things full... vague. We won't yeah, do yeah, full, because yeah. you've probably do you know other videos on this so the second area major area oh the, no 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 you can spoil that we just won't go like deep into story into, spoilers you can spoil you can spoil the areas and stuff that's right fine. so the castle yeah. area the second yeah, area yeah. is especially the water room uh, which is of course a notorious yeah. area in the original a very difficult like very big combat arena but in this it was at that point i think you're getting just a, a feel for the weapons a feel for the movement you can accommodate you're getting into the rhythm of the movement. I don't know. I need to go back and play the originals to see the remakes. I mean, if there is a difference in how Leon feels, I really did feel like there was something heavier about him. I don't know if that's my imagination or the, the ramifications of that, but you do accommodate for it. And I, I, by the end, I was totally, totally sold on it. And I wonder, is that, maybe the point that you're meant to feel very uncomfortable because they probably know people who've played the originals for so long are so used to it and have played the remakes so they maybe wanted you to or wanted players who are familiar with it to have that emulated feeling of learning a new control as they first control leon and getting better just as leon's getting better throughout the game if you know what i mean yeah um or I could be talking out of my ass. And yeah, no yeah, no, you could be, but like, it, I mean, that's um, that was part of the reason with like Resident Evil Four. Like, think of, imagine you played Resident Evil One, Two, Three, and then you went to Four, and like back in the day, you're like, Jesus, this is completely different. How do I control this? So they could, they could have been going for that, but that's a good point, though. I could be talking out of my ass, very likely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. No, I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> but. Um, as I said, I, I I accommodated by the end, so it was. I only bring that up because it was such a turnaround. When I started playing it, I was genuinely kind of not upset or kind of like, oh, you know. But I did feel like, oh, this is going to be. I was worried that it wouldn't, it wouldn't click with me. That mm -hmm. it would be something that I was like, oh no, this isn't going to work. But I should have. I should. Have, I should have trusted Capcom. I well, I do trust Capcom yeah. completely, and I do now, of course. But the movement is it, it gives you so many more options, gives you so many more. It even makes more sense in the context. They, like the, in the original, I uh, as you say with the knife system. Now, I don't have a problem with the old system where you, you take out the knife each time. You can still do that here as well if you want. You can you can uh, stab directly with your knife. You can swing it around. If we had some internet issues. David was talking about a knife. David, continue talking about this fantastic knife system. I know. I love knives. Um, so in the original, of course, yes, you have your single-use knife, you, uh, knife, as you said. In the in the remake, it is now a... a you have three knives, I think, or well, multiple knives, but there's one main knife, which is actually very lore-wise, it's nice. It's the knife that you get off Marvin in uh, Resident Evil 2. So Leon has kept it. And it now has a durability... The knife is a lot more useful. It was useful in the original, but now it's really useful. You can use it to break open things, to stab, to swat, to slash if you want a wider area of effect. And you can use it for stealth killing. You can use it, most importantly, for parrying, which is one of the oh, best yeah, systems yeah. they've introduced. Mm -hmm. And I presume the durability, well, I, I can guess the durability is there to counterbalance the fact that it's a lot more useful. Uh, I know some people have had some issues with the durability, saying that... Uh, you know, it's not fun or it's too expensive to repair. Pro tip, it was the first thing I upgraded fully. Get the durability up. It's very useful. I think it's an incredible addition to the game. As I said, the parrying opens up all sorts of uh, all sorts of new gameplay um, potential. For example, there's a trophy for killing the Garadors, the guys with the giant Wolverine claws, um, solely with your knife. But in getting that trophy, I realized I could have almost like a sword fight with it, where you keep oh, parrying yeah. and attack and parry and attack. So 
as I said, it's opening up options like that. And I think making you pay for it to repair really opens up an additional sort of survival horror element to Resident Evil 4, which a game, the original, was never... I mean, people call it survival horror. I don't, I've always viewed it as action horror. I don't even necessarily view it as horror. It's more like an action thriller. Um, has our horror elements, of course. But So it, it adds uh, a real key point of survival horror, the sort of... Um, this idea of item management of and again that was in the original but now it adds an additional layer of do i want to spend my money repairing this do i want to take my chances without it do i want to upgrade my weapon instead do i want to even engage with the parry system i'd recommend that you do but you don't have to so i think that's an incredible addition by capcom to really almost tackle one of the critiques that the original would have had this sort of feeling that it's not as survival horror as, you know, it's, you know, predecessors. So it it does that while also fully complementing sort of the more action-packed sort of uh, original. So it's, it's both, I suppose, uh, what's the word? Reverent to the original or like in, 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 uh, in parallel to the original, but also enhancing it in a way that the original didn't have. So... Yeah, the knife system is very good. Yeah, just just jumping off that point about sort of it adding more to I like the, the economy of it. It's like when I played the original Dead Space and even the remake, even though it is slightly better in Dead Space remake, the economy in that game just isn't good. Since you can buy or craft is it buy or craft ammo, I forget, but since you can buy ammo, I think, and you can kind of cheese the game where you can kind of if you only have a handful of weapons, it'll basically only spawn that ammo. The item economy in Dead Space is just not good. Whereas I think in this game, it's borderline perfect on the normal difficulty because I never had too much money that I didn't know what to do with it. I never had too little money that I couldn't upgrade or repair the weapons. And then also, it always seemed like I was on the cusp of like, oh crap, I'm really low on ammo, I kind of have to, you know, hang back here and kind of play it a bit smarter. And then in the next room, there'll be a bit of ammo to kind of bring me up to that middle point where I'm like, okay, I can go for this again. I can start shooting enemies. And then my my ammo reserves would deplete more. And then I'd be like, oh, I kind of have to, you know, be a bit more relaxed here. And then in the next room, there'll be more ammo. So it just... It's like everything was really well balanced. I don't know what it's like on the later difficulties, but everything was really well balanced on the normal difficulty. And while we're talking about sort of the action horror, which I do believe this game is, and the original and Dead Space, uh, did you have any like scary moments in the game? Because for anyone that watched my stream, I streamed the part where I met the regenerators and I was scared. I will admit, you might have seen it if people have watched it. But eventually once i like it was sort of like the horror building up to seeing the regenerators was scarier than actually seeing them and then once i saw one it was like okay i know what to do here this is fine and for me that was pretty much the only scary part and it was like 15 20 minutes of the game when i was leading up to the initial encounter with the first regenerator and then after that there was nothing so did you find any like did you was there any scary parts of this game for you david there were but not in the traditional sense of um dread or sort of terror it was more like a jump a sudden like adrenaline uh Hmm. so for example uh the fight with verdugo the uh that the like salazar's or ramon salazar's uh, right hand the weird insect guy he's sort of he chases you down in the in the sewers where the liquid nitrogen buttons are that boss fight in the original is one of my favorites but it's not particularly it's scary in the lead up and all but in the remake it is taken to the next level in terms of the in terms of the intensity it's a lot more the music is a lot more bombastic in your face and verdugo can travel very very quickly it can it can travel through the gantries above you or down below you and it can sprint after you and um I was playing with headphones on when I was when I was fighting it and he was right behind me without me realizing and I did jump at that <laughs> and just how like intense it was I was like oh fuck um 
which is funny because in the original, I know that fight so well, and I actually find it really fun and more like you're dodging his attacks, this, that, and the other, and freezing him. Whereas here, it was a lot more sprint, sprint, sprint. Where's the last button? Where's the last button? Sprint, 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 and just the sort of terror there. Um, but that was more, as I said, a, a shock or a jump. The regenerators, I'll be honest, I found them a bit scarier in the original, but I was also a lot younger when I first played Resident Evil 4. I don't I don't know how old I was, but I was quite young and I and I did have a real sense of dread leading up to them. In the remake, I did know what was coming in terms of I knew, oh, here we go for the regenerators. And yeah. I did have that build of terror or dread, I should say. But I think my experience with the original probably uh, insulated me a bit. Although I will say two things with the regenerators. One uh, well, two, two, three things. One and two. Their eyes glow in the dark now. That's pretty creepy. And they move really fast, way yep. faster than the original. In the mm-hmm. original, you could, you know, if you were careful, you could sort of coax them into an attack and run past them. Here, they will catch you. And it is really intense again, like with Verdugo. Um, and the other thing that Capcom did, which I absolutely loved, they moved the location of the thermal scope. So I yeah, got in- yeah. yes. That happened so- to me. It happened to me in the exact uh, on stream. I was like, oh yeah, here's the thermal scope. And then I was in that room. I was like, crap, there's a regenerator right outside. I don't have the thermal scope. What am I gonna do here? That yes, exactly same thing happened to me. In fact, I thought I'd done something wrong, that it was somewhere in the hmm. room. So I spent way too long in the room. I was like, I was almost like in denial of like, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Um so that too, and I'm trying to think if there are any others. There are certain I never found the original that scary. Again, mm. there were scary parts or scary elements, but broadly speaking, there is a certain boss. I don't know if I if we'll talk about this yet. There, oh, so I won't spoil it. But there is a certain boss that's not in the remake, which did freak me out a bit in the original, but it's not here in, in the remake. But beyond that, I'd say less so scary, more so adrenaline there's certain thrills or jumps yeah. but it's more as i said a thriller as opposed yeah. to a horror in I, my opinion anyways. yeah i think the best thing that i can like sort of like a parallel to it is sort of uh yeah the, the regenerators were scary but i think in general resident evil 4 kind of gives me the same feeling i get when i'm playing a souls game where yes, it's yeah. not like it's not scary, but you are on edge because you're you're adrenaline. Like it's like you're just clenching the controller, you know? Because it's like you're just ready for the next action, or like there's gonna be an enemy jumping out of a corner or behind the wall the way they do in Souls games. So that that that's the sort of feeling I got from it, other than the regenerators. So I think from there it's probably then one of my favorite parts. We we just mentioned it there was how kind of familiar but unfamiliar like the game felt so we just said there where the thermal scope was in a different spot it was in the same section and it still served the same purpose but like i went into that room thinking thermal scope there we go i'll turn around i'll kill this regenerator but he wasn't there so then you have to run and eventually you find it so was there like to me there were so many different encounters that felt almost the same as the original but they change them up just enough so that they don't feel like the exact same and i think my favorite i think my favorite encounter in the whole game is you know the bridge encounter in the village yeah bridge encounter is that where the, you, you you've rescued the one just after when you meet... oh in the in the original uh, the remake yeah yeah so well well it, it's in the the original as well it's the encounter directly after you meet the uh the merchant for the first time oh you know, it's yes kind of yes, in the village yes. and then you have to get the two stone tablets in I, the gantry the sort of hanging sort of uh, uh like the valley out yeah the yeah, side. yeah yes yes yeah so that one just kind of sums up everything i just said it still had the bridge it still had the high ground it still had the little house that you could run through that had the different doors but the bridge was in a different location the house was in a different location but it still felt like I could see, okay, well, this is this is that bridge encounter that I love so much from the original, but it's just slightly different. So, did you have any encounter, any like encounters like that? I have to think because it's a strange one. It's another. So uh, at the time we're recording, and obviously anyone for posterity, the Dead Space remake. I won't talk belabor this too long, but the Dead Space remake obviously came out recently, and I felt that was a lot more. 
I notice a lot more where they change things up as opposed to in four where it felt like everything felt like it slotted in so naturally with the original where I thought, Oh, it was like this, wasn't it? Even though I just recently played the original. So I'm trying to think of ones where it all just flowed so well together. I'm trying to think, um, Oh, I do like, as you say in the bridge one, the bridge can collapse now. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, can it? Yeah, if the enemies oh, attack it. Oh, that's so cool. I know, and that stuff is very, very cool. Yeah. Where it enhances the original. Um, well, it, it's like, sorry, it's like that That where, for anybody that doesn't know, the original, like the village encounter in Resident Evil 4 Remake. So how it ends is that a bell rings, and then all the, the villagers feck off. They're like, oh, you have to go to, to bingo, I guess. But here... You can see the bell uh, in a different part, like, and if you shoot the bell, it ends the encounter. Oh uh, yes, and it's just like that sort that's of. Incre- yes, it's that's just something. In- yeah, like yeah, that's something in the original that we've always, like, the fans have always like. You can sort of people have always wanted to do that, where you can see the church in like the silhouette, and, that, and you just shoot it, but nothing happens. Whereas now you can actually make that change. Like that stuff is just. It's so it's such that that little attention to detail, like that's the sort of stuff that really puts it in a in a tier above. I'm trying. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to. When you say things that have changed, do you mean like big changes or just similar things that they've just enhanced? Yeah, well, just anything, just just like something that is even like the slightest bit different that you feel just kind of improves the experience overall. Well, I think. The castle feels more. I I like the castle in the original. See, I have to I have to put all these asterisks because I don't want to suggest that because I I something I like in the remake necessarily means I don't like it in the original. But as for a remake, I like that the castle feels a little more interconnected than in the original. Uh, the original, I love how sprawling the castle is and how bright it is and how clean it all feels compared to the rest of the game. Whereas here, it's a lot darker. It's a lot more sinister and outwardly sinister but it 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 also feels more traditionally resident evil in that it connects back to itself yeah. or it's a lot easier to uh, keep it all together in your head in the original when you're playing it you can still keep it together in your head but it, it does feel very much like you're always going forward which is fine there's nothing necessarily wrong with that and sometimes you do loop back but here you really really learn like the layout so i really uh I really love that side of it. I think there's also certain parts of the original which were a little more annoying, aren't as annoying this time. Uh, the garden hedge maze, I liked it in the original, but I always kind of got a bit lost. Here, it's a lot more um, well telegraphed on what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go. Not to the point where it ruins the fact that it's a maze, but it's not as, you're not getting turned around as much. Um Beyond that, certain sections from the original, which maybe dragged on a bit or were a bit, uh, what's the word, of nothing burgers, like they were just there, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. um, are smoothed out or new sections are put in to make things sm- uh, continue on. The The incredible pacing of the original is still here. I think it's maybe even better here, particularly the village and the, the castle. So... Beyond that, I'm trying to think. I do love, as you said, those those examples. I'd have to... I don't know, is that good or bad that I, in my head it all just, uh, it all flows? I suppose in a remake you, you want it to be uh, as you remember it, as it yeah. were. So Well, it's basically like the remake is, to me, feels like what I'd imagine the original Resident Evil 4 felt like back in the day. As in, do you, yes. know, the way, do you know the way, like, if you play something, like, let's say, you play the original, the original Pokemon, and then you play the Let's Go remakes. It's like, oh, this is what I, this is like kind of what my childhood vision of what Pokemon looked like back in the day. Yes. If you yeah. get me. And that's kind of how, how it feels to me. And then when it comes to the castle, you know the ending part of the castle where you have the big ogre that's throwing stuff at you? And yes, you have to yeah. run across a ramp. I absolutely love that part. And that, there was that nothing, very cool. there was yes, nothing even that. like that in the original, wasn't yeah. there? No? That's no, like completely new. That's that's the section I do. I was thinking of that, but I, I felt that was maybe a bit too... I really love that section, but I think it's maybe... It's very new. It's it's a completely new yeah, experience. Yeah, it's completely... Yeah. So but, I wouldn't say... But it, it it's... And it replaces... What it replaces, I think, is... I think it's I think it's an incredible set piece. I should say really quickly, I just thought the Verdugo fight that I was talking about earlier, in the original, again, I really like it, but 
how you freeze Verdugo is you knock over these canisters of liquid mm-hmm. nitrogen and you can't be hurt by it. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that actually uh, yes. annoyed me. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've noticed that people um, when I when I've watched people blind let's play it don't realize that that's what you're supposed to do or this that and the other. Whereas in the remake, it's a little clear. It's a lot clear what you're supposed to do. And what's cool no pun intended is that you can actually be (laughs) i actually didn't intend that which is you know classic david l slash w depending um is you can actually be hurt by it i didn't even realize at first but i like that the game gives you a chance to test it out and Mm. realize oh this hurts me um and i think the buttons reset they may not though which would be pretty cruel of the game devs Uh, but uh, i don't i i mm, i'm not sure if they do reset i think i think you can still only use them once but if you miss it, you can then you can, do it again. But if you hit them with it, I don't think you can use you can that one it. again. I, Which think. I suppose, yeah, I, I suppose that makes sense. And he does, I suppose, he's not as it's. It feels a lot more feasible that you could take him down with just weapons as opposed to the original, where he could dodge bullets and was actually r- almost entirely bulletproof. Whereas now it feels like you have a more of a fighting chance. Again, it's a little, the whole game's tone is a little more realistic. It's obviously still a bit, you know, yeah, can't be, you heightened, know. can't be, mm. but it's not like he's not backflipping and side flipping, dodging bullets and being bulletproof like in the original. But, yeah. um, but beyond that, there's, as you said, just these little enhancements or new sections put in, which really, really are really good. I don't think any of it detracts from the original. No, no, I don't think it does either. And one more thing about like a subtle change. You know when the wolf comes in on the El Gigante fight? Yes, yeah. And when the when the lightning strikes from yes. behind them, I was just like, it just it, so anime. It's it, great. It's, see, it's like they they very clearly went for like a darker tone with the game. Like it's a bit more serious, but then they still have that moment. Like uh, the wolf comes in, lightning strikes behind them as he helps, and he jumps down. And he helps. It's like, oh, that's that's just so cool, and it's just. It, it's just all them small little bits that just add it all up into just this lovely game that I just I absolutely adore. Like, to be honest, I can't see how this game won't be in, like, my top three by the end of the year. Because there's, like, Tears of the Kingdom, Starfield, if that does come out, and this. Shit, yeah. Like, it's... it's Yeah, this game is, is magical. So, we're all, you know, positive. You know, we love this game. But I just want to talk about a part that I think definitely... It, see, I think the reason why this next point I'm going to speak about this and why it's a negative is because, to me, there are so few negatives about this game that this kind of is the only real stand, like the only real negative I can bring up. So when I first played the demo, uh, I noticed there was like this weird shimmering. Uh, see, I'm I'm not I'm not like a technical person, so I don't actually know the official terms, but that's just what I would call it. It's like a weird shimmering on shadows and bushes and stuff, like when the light would shine through it. And in general, I think this game it looks good, but it doesn't look great, you know? And I think it's mostly stuff like that, like a weird shimmering effect on hair when you have Leon's new hair physics or whatever the feck you call it on. And then one other thing that I noticed kind of in like in hindsight watching, I don't think the blood looks very good in this game. It looks almost like it's jelly or something. Yeah, it's funny that you say this because to call back, this is a very weird one, but bear with me. To call back to the Sonic Frontiers video, you might remember, as I'm sure all your devoted fans are, yes. uh, will be no, aware. No, David, they're all your devoted fans. Are only of course, here for you. that's right. Yes, yeah. of course. High viewer retention. That's that's what I get. <laughs> um, or listener retention. You might remember that I mentioned that one of my biggest issues with Frontiers, or at least the series in general, was the production quality or values in the modern era. Or the fact that it felt like it's double A or they're 2.5 A games, if you know what yeah. I mean. Like they're almost triple A. Certain elements are AAA, I guess, but excuse me. So with the RE games, I viewed them as the standard that I felt Sega should be hitting. Maybe they hit it with like Yakuza or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But when I went back to play Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake, I noticed, like you were saying, stuff like the reflections, stuff like now, I'm not technically sophisticated with the gamer jargon to understand what's going on. 
but I was like, yeah, this doesn't look very good. It looks kind of ugly or stuff. Now, certain elements really look nice. I know some people don't like the uncanny valley of the of the games. I think it's yeah. improved a lot in Resident Evil 4. Mm. I don't think it's that uncanny. But as you say, the hair, there was something with the, the hair effect that you could turn on and off. I turned it on. Didn't seem to have any impact on the performance. And I sort of understand what they were saying. I was like, oh, oh okay. It looks, as you say, parts of it were weirdly ugly but i don't think it was ugly in the sense that for example in the original especially the wii version and i know this sounds like such a fanboy cop out <laughs> and it kind of is but the low resolution kind of adds to the sort of the murky awfulness of the village yeah. and the fog except Whereas, for when you're looking for blue tokens because on the wii they're oh, impossible yes, to see god suit. awful yeah it's <laughs> oh um and I know you could say like, oh, in old CRT TVs, like that's part of like the, the the display can obviously play into that. But here, obviously, you're going to be playing it on a like a 4K yeah. OLED or whatever, and it just doesn't look very. Now, now parts of it do look nice, but like the the lighting and all can be, you know, particularly in the castle, I think is quite nice. But something about the hair and the fi- fibers, like it, it is, and you say the blood is a bit. Like it's not particularly like gooey or something. Yeah, like it's just or even like when at the start when you see the dog, the dead dog with the maggots in it, and I just thought this doesn't look, this doesn't look very um to call back to to the Sonic Frontier. Like now it is tri- it's definitely triple A. Don't get me wrong, but I, I noticed more imperfections in it than I had remembered. Um, so I'd say that's probably the weakest. I've heard people describe it as unlike, for example, Dead Space remake that we were talking about. Yeah. Um, that feels like a PS5 game, whereas this feels like a PS4 game on PS5. Now it has the loading times of a PS5 game. Oh yeah, very, loading very times fast, are yeah. yeah. Um, and it runs well, like at 60 frames. It, especially in light of other games that have launched recently, we, you know, I really, th- in that sense, it's very technically well done. But there is something visually, and again, I'm not sophisticated enough in that in that sort of field uh, to know. But that would be one of the apart from like minor like personal things about like changes to the lore or things that they added or took away that i'm I'm just very used to in the original that's probably the biggest issue i have with the game is the uh which i suppose is saying something if it's like yeah, stuff that yeah you can easily yeah. patch out um so yeah i i don't know how to I, I I I think it's interesting that there's so many options as well for for yeah. visuals it feels like a pc game and that's why oh, i know it's a pc game but um like it's it's nice to have those options, but maybe maybe it's an awful lot for a console for our, our us uh, simpletons on the console. <laughs> hey, I was a PC for gamer for five years. I I, I was in my younger years, yeah, but then yeah. I abandoned it. I'm I'm back now, but I'm still mm. console guy at heart. Yeah. So, like as you said, I think it feels like there has been compromises made to make this run at sixty FPS, and I now. I'm not I, like visuals aren't too important for me. It's just that when this game is so good in every other res- respect, like this, it kind of the the lower end graphics kind of stand out more. And I will always, always prefer worse graphics and 60 FPS than them trying to like make it look a bit better. And then it kind of hits 60 FPS most of the time, but sometimes it dips. Like I didn't notice one frame drop in this game, like whatsoever. So. Yeah, it is. It's it's like a shame. I, I haven't played. Did Resident Evil Seven and Resident Evil Eight? Did they have the same issues visually? It's been a while well, since I've touched them. So I know Seven on PS Five had the notorious. Maybe it, was it just PS Five? I think I don't think it was on PS Four. Uh, it had that really awful problem with the sky. It had that really weird haze on it. If anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, like, you should just Google it. It, it it's like. Like one of the worst looking skyboxes I've ever seen. I can't believe that they didn't uh, cop that, or maybe they did. Maybe it's something to do with the PS5. Um, but Resident Evil Seven uh, at the very start of the game, as you're going into the ma- to the not mansion, the the, the house. house, the yeah. the the villa, whatever. Um, that is that was their village. Nothing's really jumping out at me. Yeah, I I can't remember village having any any visual issues now. Yeah, and even Resident Evil Two and Three Remake. Like I said, the stuff that I'm noticing with the reflections that was more on the PC version. My PC, it's like a GTX 1070, I think. So it's like 2018. It's it's getting old now. I mean, the RE games are very well optimized, and even Resident Evil Two Remake is um, 
Yeah, it runs great on Steam Deck, doesn't it? It runs really, really well. And I'm able to get, even though it's a 2019 game, I can play it at 144 hertz, you know, relatively high settings. So it could be something to do with my PC. I need to go back and play it on the on the PS4 to do a comparison, like console to console. But then it wasn't really jumping out at me. And again, it doesn't ruin the game or anything. It's not terrible, but it's, as you say, the closer you get to, well, perfection's maybe strong, but the closer you get to like true, like exceptional, uh, elements then the more this stuff sort of sticks out I think yeah. so anyways oh so yeah yeah definitely because yeah. like like if, if you're sitting down and you're talking about a game like you know you kind of have to find the flaws in it but it's just you, yes, you yeah. do actually have to search quite deep when you like get I, into the higher yeah. end like the nines and ten out of tens kind of games yeah. to be to, to put it another way in terms of and I, I think this for all of the modern Resident Evil games and a lot of the older ones, in terms of design, which I think is one of the hardest and most ethereal yep. parts of game game development, in terms of the design, I think the Capcom team and the, what they've been putting out with Resident Evil anyways is some of the highest quality and they have the best understanding of this type of game that I've seen out of any developer ever almost. Whereas technically, like the biggest issues I think with the games, or this game anyways, are more on the technical side. And even then, they can be fixed. They're not that serious, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, so Another, just just to draw another another comparison to, to FromSoft games, like that is exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly what FromSoft are. They are at the absolute pinnacle of game design. But they have, now, FromSoft's technical issues are way worse than what's here. But it's like they are like they are at the peak of Mount Everest with, with their game design with the Soul series and Elden Ring and Bloodborne and all that. But they just can't get the technical stuff right. Whereas yeah. here, it's like the technical issues aren't as aren't like they're nowhere near as bad. Like this game runs at a solid sixty FPS. Elden Ring struggles to run at well, it might it might now, but at launch Elden Ring did not run at a solid sixty FPS on PS Five. So yeah, that that is another. Yeah, sort of from exa- soft parallel to that's the perfect way to say it. i couldn't say it about uh, any better yeah. perfect comparison thanks there, david thanks thanks for inflating my ego there thank you no problem at uh, all. so this is something that me and david have discussed outside of these random videos that we do but i i, I think we both have the same issue now again we have to preface this by all saying the original and this game still amazing games it's just when you reach the peak Certain things might pale in comparison. And I think kind of the end section of the mines and then the island in the original and in this game still are worse than the village and the castle. And I don't think they've really done much, except for the minecart section. I like the minecart section in this game a lot more. It's just a lot quicker and it's a lot more fun. But I still think it's just the stupid action with... A ridiculous amount of enemies and i think the island and the end of the mines are improved in this game but they're only improved because leon feels better to control so and it kind of works better with having loads of enemies running at you whereas the original kind of the more deliberate action i think works better so i think in that sense the island and the mines are improved the design of the island and the mines aren't actually improved themselves, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I... No, well, I should start by... I agree with you that... Um, I don't think there's any bad section in Resident Evil yeah, 4, the original, yeah, yeah. but I definitely think... I would still give the island, like, because the core mechanics of Resident Evil 4 are so good, it would easily be like an 8.5 or whatever, but the village is like a 10, yeah. the castle's like a 9.8 or whatever. So... I do think the the island is so action packed and it's in a very samey environment. It's very rusty. It's very industrial, which is fine. But it's just kind of, you know, at that point it gets kind of just churning through enemies over and over. It keeps going on and on. And in the remake, they do change it up a bit. It feels, you see, this is the strange thing because it felt very short, but it's actually not. It was about each area was about. When I, in my playthrough anyways, it took me about 18 or 19 hours, and I like I, I went through the, the shooting range doing... I was fairly completionist with it. Um, the village took me about 7 hours, the castle was about 6 hours, and then the island was about 6 hours. But the castle, and especially the island, fell quite short. Now, that could be 
because I was getting more into the mechanics and more uh, near the end I was binging it whereas at the start I was trying to savor the game probably should have savored it for longer but I just I was just so into it um so they I do they do make one or two key changes the visuals of the island it's a lot brighter it's I I have to applaud them for making a lab section and all the Resident Evil games of course end with labs or some form of lab while not copying Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake which had these very pristine labs these very clean labs this is a very dirty lab it's very sort of grimy but it's also still bright it's still colorful there's lots of blues and greens I mean you're out in an island on the ocean but it's still very it's different from the rest of the game you're introduced to new enemies I suppose the regenerators that we talked about um new bosses new characters but it still felt like it focuses maybe it do, I don't think it focuses as much on combat as the original did it feels like they cut out some of those longer sections and as you said Adam the new mechanics well or I should say enhanced mechanics or updated mechanics I think give you more options so there's more more room to play so I think it is improved in that sense but overall I would still view it as the weakest part of the game now it's still very good but it's not it's not um I don't really know what they could have done to improve it. I think everyone will just... You just can't beat the village and the castle, especially the village. Yeah. I mean, it's just so good. Yeah, so. well, I think it, it is. It's just that it's... it. The other parts are just so good that they're just slightly worse. It's still, like... I still really enjoy it. And, and I'm glad it's there. Yeah, that's not cut out. That would have really yeah. sucked, though. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm mm. damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, exactly. So... The final two things that we need to talk about david yes. are the bosses yes and then we'll talk a small bit about the story i don't want to go too deep into spoilers and stuff but we'll talk a small bit about the story so i just want to open this up david by asking you what was your favorite boss fight let me see i think it might have been verdugo hmm? i need to think back now verdugo as i said in the original now resident evil in general the bosses kind of suck. Not always, but generally they're not the best, in my opinion, anyways. But 4 is an exception. I love 4's bosses, all of them. Um, But in the original Verdugo, and I don't want to repeat myself too much, but it's a very tense fight, but it is also, if you know what you're doing, you can you know manipulate it very well. Whereas here, it just feels like it's been taken to the next level. There's a lot more sprinting. There's a lot more like frantic searching around the area is a lot bigger or it feels a lot bigger than in the original. Uh, Leon has more quips. It was always a little strange in the original that um, Leon didn't say or react much to Verdugo or in the original. I mean, it is kind of a horrifying experience if you think about it from Leon's perspective. I know he's well-trained and he, he's living with the trauma and all, but... I mean, that was a bit strange. So I like in the in, in, now that, that there is more of that discussion. I love the music that plays. It's just it's really, it's it's very simple. It's just a constant, um, like, I think it's strings. I'd have to listen to it again, but it's really intense and, and um, it's really frantic. I think it hasn't changed much. There are other bosses, let me put it this way. There are other bosses in that have been much improved compared to the original. The Mendez fight in the original was my least favorite. It's not my favorite in the remake, but it's much better in the yep. remake. Far, far better. He's probably, as I said, the one boss I don't... I mean, it's fine, but it's it's the one I look forward to the least when I'm replaying the original. Whereas here they add new elements to it, like dodging and you know hit uh, uh, weak points to hit and this, that, and the other, which I think is, is a great improvement. Uh, beyond that, a lot of the other bosses... Delago is still you know fun... He seems to take a lot more damage, uh, maybe a little too much, especially on the higher difficulties. It felt like after a while that it was getting a bit, I don't know, maybe overdoing it a bit. It was still a fun fight. Um, who else is there? El Gigante, the like troll ogre guys. They were fun as well. Even in the original, I never really viewed them particularly positively or negatively. They're just yeah. a, a boss. Yeah, they're um, just there. Yeah, exactly. And same here. I mean, they're still fun, but they I wouldn't they wouldn't jump out at me. Um, Verdugo, of course, we mentioned. Um, I, I, I well, I won't take too much. I'll just run through the other bosses. Um, well, the the two of note, I guess Salazar is. 
I might actually prefer the original. I know a lot of people. I I, I really like his new one here. His new um his new design here. He's a lot more mobile. It was a little strange in the original. People used to joke um or I've you know thought about like if he successfully killed Leon. What would he do then? He's just stationary. Is he stuck there forever? <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I, I always think that about Resident Evil. When people make these transformations, are they ever going to transform back? Or are they just going to stay yeah, like that forever? Yeah. Um, but I still, I, I think I prefer the original. I, I don't know why. I, this is sound really weird. I think it's just more of a, as bad as it sounds, just a pure nostalgia thing. And the sort of the music and the, the funny lines that Salazar will say. Although he says some funny lines here as well. But it's not as um, their back and forth. I think isn't as there. There isn't as much a lead up, and I'm sure we can talk about this in the last point. But the, the back and forth between them, I think, adds to the boss fight at the end. Whereas here, it felt like they were front loading it a lot. Yeah. But in terms of mechanics, I liked how mobile it was. You know, moving around the arena. But it felt very much like a lot of the other remake Resident Evil bosses. You know, the thing is jumping around, shoot the weak point. So. It was good, but I think I prefer the original. And finally, Sadler, he's very similar to the original. Yeah. So um, I've no positive or negative there. It's a fun fight. Um, there is one boss missing, but I, I I, want to talk to you about that after. I don't want to, you know, what, what's your favorite boss? Let me. Uh, well, pretty much everything you said, I, I agree with there. Like Resident Evil bosses are like fine, good, grand. Yeah, but. To be honest, I actually think the original Resident Evil 4's bosses I are actually some of my least favorite in the series that I've played. I haven't played, like, I've played 7, 8, 2 Remake, the first one. Uh, well, eights, the eights are good, yeah. yeah. Well, 2 Remake, yeah. yeah. They're not bad. Sorry, I, sorry to yeah. cut across this. When I said that they were the Resident Evil boss, I think I was too hard. There. I, I, I just think that it's not what you play. It's not what yeah. you play the series for. They're fine. They're yeah. fine. Some of them are good, but so sorry you were saying yeah i think my my thoughts on the boss just quickly is like the boss fights that were completely i just didn't enjoy in the original like the el gigante and men Men mendez is that his name mendez yeah yeah them boss fights were like borderline like just bad in the original i think but here firstly mendez just has a, a more diverse like move pool which makes it good but both of them fights because of the new graphics and how the game looks and sounds like they were just given that extra bit of like oomph. Like the fire was more fiery, I guess, in the Mendez fight. <laughs> and like, as I said, as we said earlier, the wolf coming in with the lightning when you're fighting the El Gigante is like, it's just that extra bit of spectacle that I think them fights were missing. I don't think there's anything wrong or, or wrong or good with the fights, but it's just they were given that extra bit and then my favorite fight was Salazar because in the original, both times when I fought Salazar, I had the broken butterfly and you literally stand there, put like eight bullets into him and then he's dead. So yeah. when I fought him both times, now I, I, I think I actually had you helping me. I asked like, what weapon should I get? And you said the broken butterfly for, for the time being. So maybe if, if I had just played the games blindly, I wouldn't have had that experience. But back then six eight ten bullets whatever he's dead i barely even had to move i didn't see any of his moves pretty much but then here the boss fight is just way more frantic he's flying around the room you can use the environment to like when he when he sends out the big black sludge like you can when he's on the roof you can hide underneath like one of the stairs so then he can't hit you and yeah that boss fight just felt better and then the other boss fights were again all just given that extra bit of spectacle but in general it's an improvement but uh, they're still just good boss fights. I wouldn't say they they changed them to go like above and beyond everything, you know? Yeah. Can I just say, because um, I don't know if I'll get a chance to talk about this again, two things. In the original, I do particularly like, because I, I look, listening back, it feels like I just threw them out of hand. Del Lago, I really, really enjoy in the original and here, um, but particularly in the original. Um, I just think I love the music that plays. I think there's something just kind of ominous about it. It's very Jaws-like and just swimming to the boat. Um, and even in terms of like, for example, um, Salazar in the original, I can see where that's coming from. And I I think what's interesting about the remake is that because everything is slightly different, like the weapons were different. Like in the original, the bolt action rifle kind of sucks. And yeah. I always skip it. Whereas here it was like my favorite weapon yeah. in the early game. 
aim down the sights, my beloved aim down the sights. So I think that that gives you a chance where if, if you've played the original and you haven't played this, let's say, or vice versa, if you go back and play the original after playing this, which I'm sure a lot of people, well, I'd like to think a lot of people will go back and play the original. It's, it's quite accessible compared to the other games. Um, well, it's very accessible in terms of like platform. Um, I You'll find that even though the bosses, like you were saying, Adam, they all have enhancements or some minor changes. Like I, I do think, broadly speaking, it's a fresh experience in each game, if you know what I mean. Like yeah. I wouldn't go into if you, your strategy against Salazar in this game may not work in, against Salazar in the original. Um, if that makes sense. So I would recommend people go back and you know where possible play. You know, have a good time. But the one thing I need to say, they removed. One boss from the game. It. You yep. three. Yep. Well, I should say, before before I go, for I know that they do mention it in the game. It does seem very heavily implied that it's going to be in separate ways. Actually might be a good thing to put it there in terms of in separate ways. The original, it is very one-sided. You fight Krauser and then you fight... Oh, and geez, I completely forgot about Krauser. Go. Oh, yeah, I completely yeah. forgot about him. He's a... Uh... I mean, he's pretty much the same, except the. Uh, I mean, it's the same, similar boss fight, except the parry system just makes it a lot more fun. I think. Yes, exactly. It's just it's heightened from the original. I liked him in the original as well. Um, I preferred the voice acting, the character, of the original. But we can talk about that in a bit. Um, but in terms of the boss fight here, it was fine. It was there was elements of stealth, hiding from the machine, like his sort of draw, like um. Uh, drones and turrets uh you know combat melee weapons you know it was it was it was bringing all the mechanics together which was cool but you know it was fine uh u3 in the original i'm only going to say it here because i don't know if i'll get a chance to say it a very intense fight i find the design of u3 if anyone doesn't know what he looks like or it or u3 is it's like scientific name really horrific like a, a broken jaw he has like uh it's a mixture between like a centipede or a human it's it's really yeah he's like a revolting. centaur kind of looking thing yeah it's it's very revolting um and it's in a very to be fair a very video gamey setting you're in these suspended cages but it's very intense there is a time limit you can't hurt him until you escape this the zone and it's just as i said very intense and i think the scariest thing about you three is that it comes out of nowhere. There's no lore about it. It's just there. And you think this is just somewhere on the island living here or trapped somewhere. And and I think I'm always kind of annoyed that there's not, well, not annoyed, but you're kind of desperate for more info. But I think your mind fills in the blanks. Whereas with all the other bosses, they kind of add a bit more. They even add more to you three here, which part of me is happy about. But on the other hand, I'm thinking kind of the horror is lost. Yeah. But I was just... The most ex- thing I was most excited for again. I'm getting quite passionate about this. Yeah, Adam, David you know, loves you, Tree. So I have to just, I have to just let him rant. Yeah, it's just before the game came out. The thing I was most excited for was what you three sounded like. Sorry, can you hear Baz in the background? Ah, yeah, it's grand. Just keep going. Yeah. That's David's dog, Benny. That's my dog. Yeah, yeah. I'll let him in now in a minute. It's yeah. just, um, he can't make up his mind. He's sad about you three as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you three is very. Um, if anyone doesn't know, you should just look at... Well, I almost kind of want people to just play the original and not realize U3 is coming because it comes out of nowhere. And again, I think that's part of what builds the horror is that it's like, what the fuck is this? What's this horrible creature? And then you never hear it talked about again, which is, you know... But it does seem like it's going to be in separate ways. So I'm excited for that. But I just wanted to give U3 a shout out because since the game came out and I realized this, I've been talking to Adam and I had to get this out yeah. here. I That's need the only to reason I, I, I brought you on for this video. This is the only reason yeah, I'm yeah. even here. I could yeah. just leave now. Yeah. Bye, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, let, ba- let Baz in. Yeah, I'll, gonna, I'll, I'll, be, my, I'll be back in two seconds because I'm going to let him in. So yeah, David loves David loves U3. Uh, to be honest, U3, I don't really like. Uh, I don't really think he was... I don't, I don't understand David's love for U3, but I'll just let David love U3 the way he wants to love U3 with all them tentacles and the four legs and the two arms, whatever David likes, okay? But, uh, yeah, I think U3 was a fine boss fight. I don't really think... To be honest, I think he's the worst boss in the series. In Resident Evil 4, should I say. Not in the whole series. I've never played enough. But, yeah, David loves U3. So maybe we'll see him in the... Whatever the Ada Wong DLC is. I forget what it's called. 
So sorry, I've just uh, sorry. I hope I hope uh, I've just uh, dipped in here. I hope nothing uh, nothing untoward about you three was being said. No, there was stuff about you and you three and the tentacles and his four legs. That's what was said. So David, <laughs> very good. <laughs> so then finally, we have to talk about the story. Uh, it's much changed. Well, it's kind of the same, but it, there's there's a darker tone. A lot of the characters are used in different ways. Like Ashley is definitely more prominent of a character. Leon and Ashley actually speak to each other as well, which is good. <laughs> Leon, as David said, just doesn't go, Leon, Leon, all the time. So that's or great. Ashley doesn't do that, you mean? Oh, yeah, Ash. Well, I mean, maybe <laughs> Leon does it as well. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess so. Yeah. Luis is, like, completely changed. He's, like, he's a lot more prominent in the story. Ada Wong, very controversial. Uh, unfortunately, the, the actress got uh, bullied yeah, online so, because like, of it, which is say, what's wrong fucking with people, stupid, yeah. okay? Don't be doing stupid yeah. shit like that. So, uh... And then all of the villains are pretty much the same, except for Salazar. I think he's just a bit less. He's just since since the tone is a lot darker, he's just less whimsical. If you want to use that, yeah, he's it, less. Um, yeah, it, I have no idea what what word to even use. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's less Salazar. That's the only he's, he's yeah. he has to be one of the most unique That's kind goofy. of. Yeah, he's one of the most unique villains in a game like I've ever played. So they kind of took away the Salazarness of them. So for anybody that doesn't know, very quickly, uh, Leon has to go into Spain. Las Plagas, Las Plagas is running rampant, and he has to basically find the president's daughter, who is Ashley. That's sort of the setup for the story. It's set six six years. Is it six years after? Yes, I think it's, Resident... it's set in two thousand and four. So it's six years since. Yeah, six uh, years City. after Raccoon City, Resident Evil Two. Leon's by himself. Or so he thinks. And uh, yeah, there's like some weird cult stuff going on. It's Which is actually, honestly, I think is one of the coolest parts of the story is that it's basically a cult and they all yeah. worship uh, Sadler Plagas. and Las yes. Plagas. So uh, yeah, I think it's mostly just focusing on the changes, David. So uh, what changes did you like and what changes didn't you like? Well, in the original, I loved that it was very isolated from the rest of the series because it means that like when we played the original when we were younger we liked it as resident evil 4 but we didn't think of it as being part of a bigger series now obviously it is but like it has a four at the end but we just took we just thought of it as resident evil 4 if you know what i mean it's just the name of the game so here there's a bit more done to tie it in a little more with the rest of the series it still stands on its own i like that Louise is a researcher for Umbrella. Makes a bit more sense to tie it all in together. I like the Leon Ashley connection a lot more. I mean, she was fine in the original. I didn't have any issue with her, but she's she's a lot more of a go getter. She has a lot more. She's a lot more capable. She's still quite, um, you know, frightened. In fact, I thought like I joked at the start with the Leon help, but um, voiced by Sandy Cheeks as voice actress, of course. Really. In the original. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're a big SpongeBob head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll if you ever replay the original, you'll, you won't be able yeah. to unhear it now. I um, want to go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Um, but was I say? Yeah. Whereas here, she sounds a lot more like a frightened child, which I guess is what she is, or like a frightened woman, I should say, not child. Like a frightened, like she sounds terrified, especially if you die or if you take serious damage. The set, the voice actress, the terror in her voice—it's—it's it's actually like gets to me, and I'm like stressed out. So, those changes I really, really like. Um, <coughs> there are some changes that I'm not too keen on. I know there's some controversy. I'm not too keen on Ada Wong's voice. I really like the voice in the in Resident Evil Two remake, and even in the original. Although I really, really love the Resident Evil Two remake voice, but I I think the abuse the actress got is absolutely terrible and should not happen at all. And it's just a different interpretation, you know. Who ca- like come on guys um, yeah, yeah grow up it's a fucking exactly. game <laughs> i like her redesign makes a lot more sense i think than in the original the th- main things i didn't like i hate to say it but the villains are a bit of a letdown compared to the original especially yep. salazar and especially sadler I, I i i i think people everyone talks about salazar i love salazar he's yeah. so co- he's so like creepy and funny in the original and their their banter back and forth leon and salazar or ramon as he's called here um 
as in Ramon Salazar. He's obviously he's called Ramon in the original as well, but they don't use Salazar as much in it here. But they they do have a big a bit of back and forth. But as I was saying, it's mostly at the very end. Um, there is a sort of comedy with them. Um, and there is a rapport with the uh, or back and forth with like his intercom announcements, this, that, and the other. And Mendez is quite threatening still. Mendez wasn't really much of a character in the original. They do a bit more to add to it here, which is cool. But I think it's missing that that sort of um what's the word camp i know it is a more serious tone i think they probably could have still added stuff in and yeah S- sadler in particular i don't think people fully appreciate in the original i'm not saying you uh, like when i say people i just mean like the the fan base if you ever go back and play the original sadler is like one of the funniest characters in it like he he's like the only character who almost plays along with Leon's weird sense of humor. Like what in the Kodak conversations, it's like, he's having fun himself. Like Leon will insult him to his face and he's like, Oh, or all oh, yeah, you know, yeah. you and all yeah. the fucking weird lines that he says. Like, it's really, really funny. Or, um, um, well, I, I don't want to spoil them if you haven't, but, but like, there's all sorts of wacky things. And Sadler is just, it feels like Sadler knows he's in a, in like a schlocky action, horror comedy thriller. Yeah. And he's sort of hamming it up. Whereas here, we only we see him very creepily uh, throughout the game in like sort of visions, but we don't actually fully see him until near the end. And in fact, when he's beaten, I almost thought that something was missing or there's stuff. Maybe they'll add it with separate ways. But I was he didn't really seem like if you haven't played the original. Like if this is your first exposure to Sadler as a character, he'd even Salazar to an extent. Um, what's your takeaway from him? Like what what do you think? Whereas in the original. His plan is laid out very clearly in terms of... Now, you might think it's a bit dopey how it's done, but I felt he had more of a presence in the original. I don't know. Yeah, that... I, I, I honestly, to be honest, I think Sadler is practically non-existent in this game. Full Like, yeah. like you, you basically... Like, the game is... It took me, like, 18 hours to beat. He's probably on screen for, like, 25 minutes. <laughs> Oh, it's crazy. It's like, yeah. who do you think you are? Venom and Spider-Man 3? Yeah, he's just, like... <laughs> he's just no, like, he's nowhere to be seen. Like, like... When I listed everything there, I was going through, I was like, yeah, so we have Mendez, and then we have Salazar, and then we have Krauser. A Krauser actually is slightly... Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting Krauser. Yeah, I think Krauser is like, the build-up to Krauser is a bit more, uh, is a bit better, I guess. Like, they kind of give you that little cutscene, you know, at the start, where it kind of shows Leon Being training trained, with Krauser, yes. because uh, when I when I played the the original before this uh, for the second time and I killed Krauser, I was talking to you. I was like, how does Leon know Krauser? And how do we know that Leon knows Krauser? And then you said, oh, it's the Dark Side Chronicles, like the PS3 uh, light gun shooter game. That's how you know. I was like, oh, that's good. But here they at least give you that cutscene, And then leading up to him, you kind of go into his, uh, you go into like his kind of base camp, I guess. And you're reading the little notes where he's kind of talking about Leon. So at least there's that, but Sadler, I mean, it is nowhere. I know that uh, outside the technical stuff, like the technical stuff is stuff that's just like, oh, it's a flaw. That's the probably the biggest disappointment. And all joking aside with you three, I, I know he's going to come back or it's very likely he'll come back with um, separate ways. And even then it's not that big of a deal. But the, the one thing I was genuinely kind of like, what? Like when I, fe- I was kind of like upset by or like bothered by is the villains and how like I said, I mean, they're fine, but as you said, like Sadler, he's a bit of an, he's creepy, uh, like when you see these visions of him, but I just feel like <sighs> there was no, dis- it didn't feel like there was much time to, for the characters, like there's a bit of it with Leon and Ashley and even Leon and um, Ada and Ada and Louise and such, but, and I liked Louise being the sort of, at first I wasn't too keen and he was more of a, a womanizer, but then it, it actually has grown really on me now and he's one of my favorite characters. I love him in the original as well. But Sadler in particular is just, it doesn't feel like they have any sort of engagement really. It's all yeah. very, it's very creepy. I love there's a particular moment in the castle where you see someone with a last plague as parasite frozen in time and a bunch of dead monks are like praying to it. It's very creepy and very Oh eerie. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, like that, that stuff is really, is really, cool, really, yeah. really cool. But and it goes into the history of Sadler and like his family. Like it gives that sort of extra lore, which is really cool. But in terms of the actual characterization, it like if you haven't played it, like it's really it in the original, you see him very early on and he contacts you throughout the game. It is a little weird at times that he doesn't kill Leon when he can, but 
that's just part of the. Ah, that's just know, part of just any that's movie just part or of the game genre, or yes. just anything. But here, like he really, I, I just couldn't get over how like, like you said, he's probably on screen for like twenty five minutes. It's, I don't know, that was really probably the biggest disappointment of the entire game. I don't know which sounds a bit. Well, no, it's probably is true. Well, it shows no, the quality yeah, yeah, of the rest yeah. of the game, yeah. Hmm. And also, uh, Salazar looks like Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, I just the second I saw him, I was like, "That's that's Queen Elizabeth." I couldn't get it out of my head. They kind of made him look a bit more sickly. Uh, yes, yeah. They like you can see that, yeah, like that, like that. That last slag is just running through his veins, I guess. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think that's the story pretty much. So, David, are you yes. ready for the rapid? The rapid fire questions. I just have to uh, get my rapid fire questions. Yes. Get my list here. Okay. I just dropped my pen. <laughs> Favorite boss. Verdugo. Favorite enemy. Garador. Favorite weapon. Red nine. Okay. Old Ashley or new Ashley? New Ashley. Okay. This is kind of probably. What's your favorite handgun? That was I should have opened with that. Oh well, sorry if if uh, if we have to go weapon, I guess. Well, I, I could say like rocket launcher, of course, because we all love the rocket launcher. Um, I, of the base game, we go on the just the base game ones, not the ones you can unlock later. Okay. Um, bolt action. Then I'll do bolt action and red nine for favorite handgun. Okay, and broken bottle by is a magnum, so that doesn't count. Favorite one liner. In the remake. Yes. Nighty night, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my <laughs> favorite one as well. Unfortunately, that no thanks, bro, is gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, your right hand comes off is gone. Yeah, <laughs> but they do add in some new ones, and a lot of them are so bad they're good. Like, well, that's the original; it's the same. They're so bad they're good. So yeah. Well, well, can I just say, Adam? Yes. To finish off, question for you: Does this replace the original? Okay, well. I should have ended with that because I had that in my head, but that good save there, David. Thank you. I'm, I'm on the ball. So me and David, once again, have spoke about this before, but I think my, my thoughts on this are Resident Evil 4, the original, is still an extremely playable game and it's still an absolute, like, it's phenomenal, okay? And it's very accessible. You can buy it. If you really want, you can buy the original version for pretty cheap, but on the GameCube, PS2, or the Wii. But... If you have a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, PC, Switch, you can get it really, really easily. And usually it's like on sale for like five euro. So you're not really losing much by at least attempting to play the original, which I would recommend you do. (coughs) And if you can get past the tank controls, which again, I don't think are bad. Tank controls in Resident Evil 4 compared to tank controls in Resident Evil 1 and 2, the originals, night and day difference. Resident Evil 4 tank control. They're very playable, even to this day. If you can play Resident Evil 4, get past the tank controls, then I would recommend you play the original, then play the remake. But if you spend five euro on the remake or on the original, sit down, play it. Tank controls really aren't your game. Can't get into it. Then I think it would be a shame if that turned you off playing the, the remake because... Or turns you off playing, experiencing Resident Evil 4 full stop. So if you think tank controls will turn you off, just go straight for the remake. Because again, I don't think it replaces it the way Resident Evil 2 remake replaces the original. Because Resident Evil 4 is available and is easily, you can buy it anywhere. So I will say no, it doesn't replace the original. However, I do think it's better than the original. Ooh, see that? That's a tricky one for me. I I fully agree with everything you said there in terms of um, the remake. I think it complements the original, and the original complements this. It's a bit like Final Fantasy VII remake and Final Fantasy VII the original. I almost feel like you well, with Final Fantasy VII, they're both. You actually do need to play both of them. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, they're, they're actually different stories, effectively. Um, I think you really owe it to yourself to play both of these games. As you said, I I really recommend. I know it can be difficult for the tank controls. But if you give it even 15 minutes, half an hour, I promise you will get it. And it's one of the best games ever made. Yeah. And like I said, it's very accessible. If you can, the PC version with the uh, with the uh, HD pro- project mod or the Wii version are probably the two best versions to play. Um, 
but highly, highly recommended. They complement each other, I think, really, really well. I all the remakes are are you know are spectacular. In terms of which is better, the original or this? As much of a cop out it is, I I just can't. I don't. I can't say. I just there's Boo, this, the re- no, we I need know, an answer, David. Rapid fire, the, go. I can't do it. Adam. Oh, I can't. David, you're bad. That's that's the last video you're ever. Oh. In. Goodbye. I was going to say the remake, but you know what? <sighs> David is blinded by nostalgia. I know. I'm va- okay. Let me say it this way. This this two things very quickly. I know I've ruined the rapid fire by by <laughs> explaining myself. And um, you're playing the outro music now as I'm just <laughs> awkwardly continuing to talk. Um, one thing about the original, I think the original is far more revolutionary and important to gaming history um, and development than the remake is. The remake is a really high quality game and I think it's probably a better game, but my preference is probably the original and I think the original is probably, well, is more important of a game than the remake. The remake doesn't reinvent the wheel, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. just a really, really well done game using a really, really well done uh, foundation. So... I suppose you could say, and then my brain breaks because I can't. <laughs> I just You're I like can't Joe Biden rest. is like, I have one great word to sum up this country. <laughs> oh God! Oh, you're gonna pigeonhole us as Republicans. I'm not a Republican or American Republican. Well, we're not Americans, so it doesn't matter. We can slag yeah, so both I, I can sides. Say what I was. Yes, both sides, Europe, um, like in Resident Evil Four. But yes, so play both these games. They're both really, really good. The remake is probably better. For more for more people, the remake is probably the better game to play if you can only pick one or two. But I'd recommend both. Well done, Capcom. Yes, well done, here. Capcom. This was... Obviously, there was no expectations on Resident Evil 2 Remake. And then they came out and they just absolutely blew it out of the water. And then Resident Evil 3 Remake, I still haven't played. But by all oh, accounts... You need to play it. It's, very, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's good. It's, it's just fine. a the source like the base material wasn't as good as resident evil 2 that's what i've heard well, anyway uh, or they've I, uh, changed loads but anyway it's still considered yes. like a good game and then resident evil 4 is like oh this game is a uh, this is special this is like like res like trying to remake resident evil 4 is like trying to remake final fantasy 7 or and it turns out both companies did an absolutely fantastic job so capcom yes. are on an absolute roll here they are, and I'll, I'll just end with this really quickly. If you haven't, I don't know necessarily why you'd be listening to this if you hadn't, but if you haven't played any of the Resident Evil games, particularly the recent slew of them since 7, and I suppose like Revelations, Revelations 2, but specifically 7, 8, 2, 3, and 4 remakes, you guys need to get on that because yeah. you're in for a a wild time and a lot of them they recently they go on sale fairly recently you are yeah. you're in for a great great yeah time, like so. can i just put put this into perspective i i'm not good with horror whatsoever but resident evil 7 looked so good and i heard it was so good that i had to play it and because of that i've now played resident evil 7 8 2 and 4 remake and even though i've shit myself on many occasions they are just that good that you just have to play them Agreed. Yes. Play them, please. Capcom, give us our check. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, that's going to be the end of this discussion. David, I really appreciate you sitting here with me for the past hour and a half talking about uh, Resident Evil 4. Well, it's actually probably less because we had to cut parts out. We had, so we had quite a but few that's uh, just, that's hiccups, just, but that is yeah. the, the nature of, uh, of nature of the business. Of Thank you recording. so much, Adam. For, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me and giving me a chance to gush about Resident Evil 4. One of the greatest games of all time and now it has a remake that hopefully can allow even more people to enjoy it's uh it's brilliant so thank you so so much and i hope everyone has a great time playing it they took out the ballistics line though i don't like that that was my favorite line in the whole game zero out of ten yeah zero Screw out of you, ten Capcom. It's, forget everything we just said it's Bad. a woke game goodbye <laughs> don't cancel me that was a joke <laughs> joke <laughs> thanks man. for watching thanks subscribe guys. like the videos david will be on Maybe Jedi Fallen Survivor, maybe? Potentially. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think Jedi so. Survivor review discussion. So, yeah, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.